Hey everybody, it's Brandon again, and today I'm taking a look at Zoran OS. I've actually had multiple people in the comments of my other videos tell me to try out Zoran, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. What I've done here is I installed it on a virtual machine on my main desktop, but um, if people are really interested in Zoran, I can test it out on one of these low-end laptops I have just to see how it runs. But this is what it looks like. I've, this is a fresh install of Zoran. I haven't installed any other software yet. Um, if you go to their website, this is the download page of their website. They have a Pro Edition, which they charge money for, $39. And they also have Core and Lite. And what I downloaded is Core. Um, and I might try Lite at some point. I, like for that 2011 MacBook Air I have, it's not very powerful, but so Lite might be an option for that. I think Lite uses the XFCE desktop. Uh, this one here, which is Core, appears to be using uh, a GNOME-based desktop and slightly modified to look a little prettier. And the theme actually looks pretty good. Uh, this system is based off Ubuntu, uh, Ubuntu 20, I believe. And so anyway, if you want to try out Zorin yourself, you just go to their page. Like I said, what you're seeing here is Core, download for free. I don't need to subscribe. And it's going to download the ISO. What I did is I, um, well, for VirtualBox, I just started a machine with this ISO. Um, but you can use any burning software to burn this onto a DVD and install it that way. I don't see a um, USB installer on here. No, but I guess you just put the ISO onto a USB. They got instructions right on their website. So I'm not going to go over all that. Um, let me close that. Of course, it comes with Firefox as default. And if you look at the software repository that comes with this, this is kind of like their version of the App Store. There's a ton available, and I believe it is because Zorin comes preloaded with Flatpak support already. And so it's got pretty much anything that you're going to want on an open source system like this ready to go. Like you might have to go out to the internet to install other browsers, which maybe we'll go over in a minute. But this is the same software center you're going to find in other GNOME releases like Ubuntu, Fedora. And it's, at this point, I mean, it's getting pretty good. Sometimes it's a little slow and clunky, but it's got everything. Uh, like here's Visual Studio Code. You're going to have a basically one-click install for it after you put in your password. Let's load that and see how easy it is to get code up and running on this. <clears throat> that last 1%, no matter what you're installing, always takes forever. What's up with that? <laughs> Come on, code. You can do it. While we're waiting for that, let's take a look at the file manager here. As I said, this is GNOME files, but it's got a custom icon theme, which looks pretty nice. I like the uh, the blue theming on everything. I think this all looks pretty good. But one thing I did notice when I was playing around, if you click on their menu down here, there's a Zorn appearance. And you can reconfigure the layout of your desktop. Here's a layout. I guess this kind of looks a little more like older. Uh, windows with the way the taskbar is. They got the names of all the icons and maybe it's not grouping them. You got this one where it centers everything. More of a, uh, a dock type look or a Windows 11 type look. Here I guess, oh we got our bar up top. You can click that to pull up all your windows. I'm just going to stick with the default. It's fine. Uh, theme here, you can change your accent color. Oh, it changes the icons. That all looks pretty neat. Of course, it has built-in dark mode, it looks like. Maybe? Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, so there's a nice-looking dark mode. I'm just going to go back to default. Here's our code. Launch that up. So that all looks fine. Let's see, if you wanted to get a different browser like Google Chrome, for some reason I doubt it's going to be in the software repository, but it might be. They got regular Chromium, the open source version, so you could install that. 
I kind of like Google Chrome just because I got all my stuff saved in it. And so let's just install that real quick. You can also get Microsoft Edge for Linux. They have a their own native version of Edge, and it's unstable now, and it works pretty good. I'll usually go with Google Chrome or Edge. You can probably do the Brave browser pretty easily. All right, so let's download Chrome. Whenever you're downloading Linux software on the Zorin, you're going to want to use the uh, Deb packages, the ones for Debian or Ubuntu, because the system's based off Ubuntu. So let's go ahead and install that. I'm going to save it. Let's see how easy it is to install that. Spoiler alert, I think it'll be pretty easy. It's one thing about Linux, you have to type in your password quite a bit. So make sure you pick a password you can remember. But you can set this up when you're installing to do an automatic login. And I should note, the installation is super easy on this. It uses the same installer as Ubuntu. And if anybody wants to see a video of how to install this thing, I can do that. But I don't think you'll need help. So we got Chrome installed. Let's see where it's at. Oops, clicked on the wrong thing. Internet. Google Chrome. Uh, should we make Chrome the default? Why not? Alright, there we go. We got that. And if we right click on it, we could probably pin it to our little taskbar here. Add to favorites. There we go. Maybe I'll sign in. Okay, they've added this to Chrome. It's kind of annoying, but I guess it's good for security. But you gotta get out your phone to log in. Okay, yeah, so here we got Chrome. Now I got all my passwords and everything saved in there. So that's neat. What else should we look up here? Oh, since this has all the flat packs on it, um, it makes it really easy to install things that are uh, that people commonly might want. Like Steam is on here. You can do an install of that really quick. They have Minecraft, but they have um, not only the Java edition of Minecraft, but you can also install Bedrock on here if you want to play with um, like your friends that are on their phone. And if you want the Bedrock Minecraft, it is, oh man, <clears throat> I don't think it's that one. Maybe I have to go to the game section and search for it. I know it's on there. I, th I th saw it when I was looking around earlier. But anyway, yeah, there's a ton of software on this. Here's some of the things, if you're used to Windows, that you might want to um, keep in mind. This Remina here, this is a remote desktop application. It'll let you connect to your Windows boxes or VNC boxes over your network. So that's handy. Office, it comes with LibreOffice, which is a pretty good one. I also have a video on my channel showing off another Office suite called, um, I think it's called WPS Office. And it's also, it looks like a good one. I've never used it that much. But this is LibreOffice. It looks pretty good on here, and it's compatible with any Office document I've thrown at it. Um, graphics, what's it come with? It comes with GIMP, which is a Photoshop alternative. That actually is pretty full featured. And this is all stuff that comes with out of the box that I haven't had to install. What has? Okay, programming, that's my Visual Studio Code. Sound and video. Um, yeah, there's some standard ones here. Rhythm Box is for playing your music or podcasts. This Pativi app is a uh, video editor. But also, if you want a player that can just play anything, VLC is right here at the top of the App Store. I think most people know what VLC is. Uh, what games do it come with? There's Minecraft, there's Steam. And I expect all that to work perfectly on here. System Tools. Um, additional drivers, I guess that's if you probably have an NVIDIA card, you can probably install the drivers right there. 
them. Linux has really made it easy to set up everything. And at this point, on pretty much any Linux distribution, the hardware support is rock solid. I know a lot of my videos on here have been about Chrome OS Flex recently, and a lot of people are noticing that it doesn't recognize a lot of that, their uh, hardware. You're not going to run into that problem on Linux. I would highly doubt it. I'd say the hardware support on Linux is better than Windows at this point because you can't even install Windows 11 on any PC that's, you know, more than four years old, basically, without hacking it. So, yeah, this is Zorin. I think it looks really good. It's probably a solid desktop. If anybody wants me to check out anything else on it, you can let me know. I think it looks nice. Um, and if you want, I can put it on one of my low-end laptops and see how it performs. But if you're one of these guys on here that is looking at alternatives um, because their Windows is going really slow, and you've been looking at Chrome OS Flex, but you really want to use a bunch of Linux applications on it, real Linux is better for Linux applications than Chrome OS is ever going to be. I can't say ever. Who knows what the future holds. But to me, something like this looks really good. It was really easy to install. I think it's beginner friendly. Um, as you can see, I mean, so far we've gone, we've installed all this stuff on our box, and I haven't even opened the terminal yet, which it does have the terminal, obviously, and it's a pretty nice looking one. But this just shows you how far Linux has come. Um, in the last few years. Like, you can do anything you want and never look at the terminal application, I think. And so, yeah, this is Zorin. I think it looks nice. You guys can let me know what you think. If you want to see more about Zorin OS, let me know. I'm probably going to test out some other Linux distributions also, just to show everybody what kind of alternatives are out there for people who are trying to get away from Windows. But, hey, if you like this, like the video, please, and subscribe. Let me know what else you'd like to see. Thank you for watching, and until next time, I hope you all have a good day. Goodbye now.